The next game I want to go over to uh, it's very interesting by the originality of the combination and tactical shot. E4, D5, ED, knight F6, D4, knight takes D5, knight F3, bishop G4, bishop E2, knight C6, C4, knight B6, D5, bishop takes F3, bishop takes f3 this is all opening po stage knight e5 bishop e2 and black plate c6 obviously you cannot take on c4 in this position because bishop takes c4 knight takes c4 queen a4 check and white wins the game so black plate c6 now they are attacking d5 pawn and they are attacking the c4 pawn. Queen to d4, attacking the knight, knight to g6, knight c3, and black play d5. This already happened in my game several times. Uh, queen to e4, c takes d, c takes d, bishop to d6, bishop b5 check, knight d7, white castled and black castled. Now this position will be great for black if they can manage to play f5 next move. So then they're gonna have very strong position in the center and have after queen moves the central pawns keep moving. So white played queen f5 and after knight c5 b4 now but is it good for white to stand to keep their queen on f5 as a blockading piece no queen is not a good blockading piece knight a6 a3 knight e7 you see that's why queen is not good blockading piece now queen has to move it's attacked queen h3 knight to c7 and bishop to d3 and finally black played f5 black has a great position now because they have potentials of going e4 um, after f5 white played bishop g5 and e4 bishop c4 and h6 now white has to move the bishop on d2 bishop takes h6 is definitely insufficient compensation uh, uh, for white because queen takes h6, queen e8 and white is uh, queen e8 is not good because bishop is hanging a simple rook f7 will give uh, a black totally winning position so white has to move the bishop to d2 uh, but now knight g6 and you see that Nothing indicates that there will be combination anytime soon, but you see how black dominates now. They're going to play queen knight e5 and queen f6, and the grandmaster that was playing with white, they seem, they feel the danger, and they recognize the danger, they smell danger before it gets there. So, and white thought that it's necessary for them to play f3 and after e takes f to play g takes f now notice on queen takes f3 knight e5 is very strong so and g takes f queen to f6 played by black threatening queen d4 check and attacking almost all the white pieces bishop on d2 bishop on c4 white simply played knight e2 and here black has a winning combination after b5 black wins here now what can white do in this position if white goes bishop d3 maybe black can simply take on d5 
If white goes bishop b3, then queen b2 is dangerous, attacking both white bishops. So white played bishop c3. Well, this is typical in-between move, and it's hard to tell that this move can lose on the spot in immediately. Uh, what happened here, black has knight f4, and you can tell that white is totally hopeless. Now, let's see why. If knight takes f4, then black plays queen takes c3, and you see the both white's minor pieces attack, they lose a piece, they lose a game. Now let's look at some couple of other opportunities. Now if black, if white takes black's queen, then black take white's queen. And now if when white plays king g2, you see it's black's move, black's knight on h3 is hanging, but two white bishops are hanging as well. So white takes one piece, one bishop first. And after king takes h3, white takes second bishop and wins the game. So after knight f4, obviously, for this reason, bishop takes f6 is not good. So that leaves white only one move, queen g3. But interestingly enough, queen g3 sets up... Uh, exposes for another shot. B takes C, now quietly taking the bishop that protects E2 knight. And if white plays bishop takes F6, now knight takes E2. And after knight takes G3, white's queen, black wins um, a lot of material. And after B takes C for this reason, uh, white simply resign. Well, now, going back to the position, this position, you can tell, how do you find combination here? How do you find B5 move? How do you find whatever happened in the game? First of all, if we don't find it, we still have good position. But that's not a consolation. We are looking for the best move. We don't know where the shot is going to be, but look, bishop on d2 is kind of loose. Bishop on c4 is loose. Now, if we had some move like queen d4 and knight wasn't on e2, we would have attacked several pieces. Those minor pieces are vulnerable. I want to play queen b2. And bishop cannot move from d2 because Bishop can move from d2, but because white c4 bishop protects the knight. So what we want to do, we want to move this bishop, make this bishop go away. If bishop goes to b3, then we have queen b2 attacking almost every white minor piece. If bishop goes the other way, then you see d5 pawn is on pre. So white has, black has different problem on, any, on every move. And when they played bishop c3, you see that knight on e2 protects the f4 square, defends the dark square bishop, and it's a little loose. You should notice there is an invisible eye that should notice something artificial, something loose in white's position. That's how you find knight f4 move. And then you started searching for it one by one move. You are not starting searching for move a6 or a5 in this position. That's what computers do. We know where to look. We are not looking at the queen side of the board. We are looking at the king side of the board and the center. We notice the knight f4 move. We double check it. It works. It wins. Queen g3, another tactical shot. They are very decisive shots. They are very powerful. At the same time, if you are searching in the right direction, the correct way, they are not that difficult. So remember, find the loose spots in the position. That's where 
uh, that's uh, what your eye should be concentrating on. That's where are the loose spots by your opponent and that's where you hit.